Today's podcast is about when people are forever the victim, which is a common narcissistic tactic. Some covert narcissists are perpetually a victim. They are the ones who are always wronged, always the victim of mean people, and never at fault for anything. Here are some examples. A narcissist says something cruel, which naturally makes you angry. She claims she never meant to hurt you, was just trying to help, and had no idea that would upset you. She may even stop speaking to you for a while after this, even if you've apologized for being upset with her. Or the narcissist tries to manipulate you into doing something you don't want to do. When you refuse, he claims you don't love him. He asks, how could you refuse to do this one little thing for him, especially after all he's done for you? Maybe the narcissist in question is your elderly parent who expects you to come at their beck and call. You tell your parent you are only available on Tuesdays and Saturdays to do what she needs. She tells your family how you refuse to help, and they attack you for being ungrateful, a spoiled brat, and more. Narcissists who behave this way, those who claim life is unfair to them, that they are mistreated when people confront them on their abusive behavior, those who blame their victims for their abusive behavior, and those who complain about their problems yet have no real interest in change are also the perpetual consummate victims. My late father and late mother-in-law were both covert narcissists and consummate victims. I repeatedly asked my father not to call after nine at night. I refused to take his call when he called at 10 one evening. His response was to call my in-laws and a cousin who lives almost 500 miles away. He told them both he was so worried about me because I didn't answer the phone and asked them to have me call him immediately. Regarding my mother-in-law, I was angry with my mother-in-law once because she had snooped through my purse yet again. She asked my husband why I was angry. I listened to the conversation. He told her why I was angry and she claimed not to know what she did would be upsetting to me. Both situations were almost identical. As a result of my father's and mother-in-law's actions, my husband and I argued yet again about his mother, and my cousin and I argued about my father. In typical forever victim fashion, their behavior caused problems for the real victim, me, and they looked good. When you must deal with this dreadful behavior, there are some things you can do. I firmly believe that relying on God is the first and best step you can make. He will help you to understand what they are doing and come up with ways to most effectively deal with this toxic behavior. Never forget the type of person you're facing. No matter what you do or don't do, they will make the situation look as if you are being cruel to them. Expect nothing else, because nothing else will happen. Remember, there is nothing wrong with you setting boundaries and confronting this person. Both show you have self-respect. However, also know that may backfire and make your situation worse. These narcissists are very talented at recruiting flying monkeys to protect them and also to chastise their victims. When faced with those flying monkeys, ignore what they say. Don't discuss the narcissist with them at all. It never ends well. Lastly, never forget no one who is truly a victim is angry about anyone setting boundaries with them, such as refusing to be manipulated or abused. Anyone who is angry that someone won't tolerate abusive behavior is toxic, period, and not a true victim. Thank you for listening to my podcast.